Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. 3 gigahertz. AMD may be able to lay claim to the world's first 3 gigahertz GPU with the launch of Narve 3X. And we're going to get right into it after this message from the video sponsor, which if you're looking for a cheap copy of Windows, it's going to be right up your street. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I have bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So as we know, the RX 7000 series or RDNA 3 is going to launch later this year and there's going to be comprised of multiple different iterations of the GPU. Obviously there will be both monolithic as well as MCM versions and we've discussed them multiple times before with Narve 31 allegedly featuring two compute dies and of course the Infinity Cache on its own separate dies well so these are going to be 5nm and 6nm respectively but if we look at the clock frequencies that AMD have managed to wrangle out of say the 6800 XT or the 69 nice 100 XT as well as this upcoming refresh with the rumors that the 6950 XT is probably going to be somewhere around the neighborhood of around 2.5 gigahertz or higher obviously depending on the overclock variant of the SKU and all of that stuff we can start to see a pattern the clock frequency of AMD's GPUs are pretty high. So I've personally been hearing, and I've mentioned in several videos now, that the clock frequency for RDNA 3 is probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 to 300 megahertz higher than RDNA 2 on average. Now it gets really tricky when we're talking about clock frequencies and GPUs, because with AMD you have the base frequency, you have the game clock, and we also have the boost clock. Now, when it comes to my experiences with the 6800 XT, for example, with a little bit of overclocking, I can get like 2700-ish megahertz out of the MSI Gaming X Trio variant that we purchased on the channel, and that actually has been thanks to all of your wonderful support, excuse me, so thanks to everyone who has been like sharing, you know, videos, liking them and all of that stuff, it really does help out an absolute metric shit ton but also on the reference model that amd lent us as well we got around 2700 megahertz in fact we could get up to 2800 megahertz using the more power tool and if you're a fan of amd you should check out that tool it's actually really cool but um yeah i've been hearing that two to three hundred megahertz for rdna3 is actually possible and basically now i've been hearing that amd could be actually looking to push a halo skew which is going to be marketed as the world's first three gigahertz gpu now i want to stress two things the first is that I really don't think that this is going to be the base frequency because I've got to tell you, if it's the base frequency, which is 3 gigahertz, I want to know how they're producing their GPUs because I don't think they're using silicon. I think they use, they're, they're just be using pixie dust. Let's just be blunt. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be like the game frequency. That's how it's been described to me. And the second thing is that obviously this is a rumor, but it is interesting because I've now had a couple of different people who were not tied to one another all tell me the same thing. And given the fact that, you know, two to 300 megahertz is what myself, you know, what I've been hearing, plus also numerous others as well in the industry, you can start to see how AMD's clock frequencies would be awfully close to 3 gigahertz anyway when it comes to like, you know, the boost frequencies or the game frequencies. Further to this, there have been a lot of reports that RDNA 3 would have, you know, uh, for Narve 31, a TDP of around 375 watts with certain models up to 450. So I'm wondering uh, if 
For example, the 450 watt models are going to be the variants which are 3 gigahertz. It's really interesting to me. Quite frankly, it's going to be a really curious next generation. I've been hearing that the RT performance of Navi 31 is going to be over three times that of um, the of Navi 21. So that would be that the highest end Navi 31 SKU is going to be over three times the RT performance of the 6900 XT. But again, I've been actually more and more certain at this point that the traditional rasterized performance is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of around 2.5-ish times. Um, and T-flops are going to be around three times faster as well. So it's going to be absolutely ludicrous for the next generation of cards from AMD. And NVIDIA, again, is going to be no slouch. Clock frequencies I've been hearing are around 2.5 gigahertz. Um, I, I think that AMD and NVIDIA are going to have products which, quite frankly, are going to be pushing people to upgrade because they're going to be so fast. Ultimately, we are not at the mass production stage yet for RDNA 3. Therefore, final silicon quality could just fail to meet AMD's expectations. But from all I'm hearing, given the fact that we're looking at most likely a 2 to 300 megahertz bump in frequency, Honestly, having very limited numbers of cards, a specific SKU which does meet the 3 gigahertz claim, would make sense from a marketing perspective, and it would definitely generate a ton of buzz. But I'm going to tell you guys that I'm also hearing some rumors already of RDNA 4, and yeah, I know, it's really bloody early, believe me. Um, and I'm hearing that RDNA 4 is a massive departure as well in architecture. Basically, RDNA 3 to RDNA 2, or RDNA 2 to 3, should I say, is kind of like Zen 3 to Zen 4. Uh, Zen uh, 4 was described to me by one person as like a fat version of, um, of Zen 3. So basically, it kind of takes Zen uh, freeze design and then just bumps everything up to 11 whereas Zen 5 is kind of a big departure in architecture and the same thing I'm hearing for RDNA 4 so I think that competition is going to be absolutely just extraordinary over the coming months if not a couple of years for all companies and obviously Intel have just announced their uh, lower end mobile uh, Arc GPUs. I've got to tell you guys, I'm not surprised that we didn't hear anything about the higher end ones. Um, you know, I've mentioned several times on the channel that I've been hearing that their parts have been kind of falling a little bit behind schedule. The good news is that to my understanding, their silicon now is coming on leaps and bounds and the software as well. So I think this is one of the reasons that we're seeing, you know, kind of summer-ish launch for the uh, discrete GPUs and more. I've got to tell you that I do think that Intel are going to come out swinging eventually. We're going to see some really impressive technologies, especially from future Arc generations. I think it's going to be really cool. So... Uh, GPUs have always been my first love when it comes to PC technology. I've always found an absolute... I, I just find them so cool, to be honest with you. I don't know why. I think it's like, you know, the early 90s for me, it was all about the Pentium processors and stuff like that. But i got to say, when I started to see, you know, the Voodoo cards and what they were capable of with early Glide games like Quake and Tomb Raider and so on, it just, it just blew me away. And I, I was just like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. Um, anyway, switching from one thing that's awesome, I actually really want to touch on direct storage. So as you are possibly aware, direct storage is already part and parcel of uh, Microsoft's endeavors on console with the Xbox series, but obviously PC has been falling a little bit behind. And direct storage is basically a completely different way to handle IO requests, particularly when it comes to games. And this is going to have massive ramifications, not only in loading times, but also the ability to stream in crap tons of data just ridiculously fast into the GPU. Now, I've discussed direct storage a couple of times already, pretty in-depth. Um, so I'll try to remember to link those videos in the description. If not, you can, of course, just search direct storage on the channel and you'll see uh, several really in-depth videos discussing this. But 
One of the really big changes, of course, with direct storage is it really fundamentally changes how IO requests are batched and all of that stuff. And we've already seen a kind of demo of this um, with for Spoken, which is going to launch later this year. It's also going to be, of course, on the PlayStation 5 as well. It's kind of interesting that we're seeing it on the PC. And that's where direct storage is going to debut. I just, I, I don't know why I find that kind of whimsical. But there's actually been a couple of benchmarks which have actually uh, dropped. And I've got to say, these performance numbers are looking really impressive. I want to give full credit to WCCF Tech actually for this discovery. I'll leave the, uh, a link to their article in the video description. The too long didn't read here is that we're looking at up to 40% CPU savings with direct storage. Obviously, the average is possibly going to be less, but direct storage is designed for modern gaming systems, handles smaller reads more efficiently, and able to batch multiple requests together. Uh, we've discussed, of course, this multiple times on the channel, but it also means that um, we get some other really cool things, like in the future, GPU decompression. Now, GPU decompression is something that my, um, NVIDIA have already kind of discussed with the launch of uh, RTX 30. And I think it was RTX... What was it? RTX IO? My brain's just completely frozen. RTX IO? I think so. Um... And basically, you know, at the end of the day, the idea here is that you decompress data directly on the uh, GPU itself to save the CPU even more, um, well, more cycles. And furthermore, when you consider where most of the data for modern games goes, it is, of course, destined bound towards the GPU. I'm going to be really interested to see how direct storage impacts the design of games. Ultimately, we don't even have titles at the moment which take advantage, of course, of direct storage. Like, it's just not a thing at the moment. Um, this is, of course, going to be like anything, you know, we slowly start to see it, like ray tracing, for example. Slowly titles start to take advantage of this stuff. But I think it's going to be really cool, and I'm pretty hyped. And I think that just about does it for this particular video. If you have enjoyed it, you know, of course, what to do. Leave a likey on the video and subscribe for more content. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for watching. Have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.